Hi everyone, it's Miss Brenner. I'm here to continue on with our article, Football's Economic Impact on College Towns, College Players, and the NFL. Uh, this is going to be part two. We are currently on section four on page three of our article. We are going to continue to answer questions in Edpuzzle. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me um, and let's get started. All right, so we're looking at section four. Four thoughts on NFL's news of the week. One, although George Kittle and Travis Kelsey earned contract extensions at the top of the tight end marketplace, the 49ers and the Chiefs were able to maintain traditional team-friendly contract structures and avoid guarantees, except injury guarantees, past the early low-risk years of the deals. Thus, here are the deals. Kittle, two years, 30 million, and we'll see, and Kelsey, three years, 30 million, and we'll see. Two, the Super Bowl champions were able to lock up Patrick Mahomes, Chris Jones, and Kelsey on a team-friendly deals with players forfeiting early monies to be part of the program. Usually, it is the Super Bowl winning players leverage, leveraging the team. Here, it was different. The Chiefs also exposed the cap myth as a team with little to no cap room signing its players, while teams with large amounts of cap room let them go. We don't have the cap room is the NFL's team's equivalent of she's just not that into you. 3. The NFL's terrorist competitive balance will be severely tested this year, as players of all skill levels will be potentially or sorry, will potentially miss games while on the COVID list, and there will be different decisions on fans at stadiums. Several stadiums will have no fans, eliminating any home field advantages, while some teams will have fans, giving them some competitive edge. Competitive balance will be on hold in 2020. 4. The story of the Seahawks releasing a player after a woman tried to sneak in to see him is cute for everyone but him. But know this, if that woman was going to see Russell Wilson or Bobby Wagner, there would be a different ending to the story. Lesser talent equals lesser tolerance. And that is section four of our article. So we are listing three elements of section four that are essential to understanding this article. Please list them in the open-ended section on Edpuzzle. Next, I would like you to paraphrase the underlined section of part four, which goes, several stadiums will have no fans, eliminating any home field advantages, while some teams will have fans, giving them some competitive edge. Next, I'd like you to answer, the author says, lesser talent equals lesser tolerance in section four. What is implied in this statement about college football and professional football. Alrighty guys, we're looking at section five next, which is labeled and finally a personal reflection. We are on page three. Tomorrow I will drop my youngest son off at college. Makes me sad to write this. To begin in-person instruction among thousands of students, some of whom will not take adequate precautions about spreading the virus. And next week, I will begin in-person instruction to 50 students in my sports law class at Villanova Law School, along with regular in-person meetings with my fellow advisees, etc. All right, on to page four. None of this behavior sounds like the person who has, in this space and other forums, questioned playing football, a sport that requires the opposite of social distancing in this time of a virtuent COVID transmission. I get it. I am not consistent here. Expression caution for athletes to which I have no personal or professional attachment, yet letting my sons, the most important people in my world, head out into an uncertain world where the virus has recently surged. My older son just moved to L.A while I opt for in-person teaching to boot. On the professional side, my primary point has been that we need to be honest 
that health and safety is not the top priority many claim it to be. If it were, we would not have non-bubbled contact sports in 2020. Rather, the top priority is economics, and I, as much as anyone, can get that. And I guess that brings me back to the personal side. Health and safety are paramount, but there are other concerns. I want my younger son to experience life on campus as a college freshman. I want my older son to pursue his musical talents in the place most conductive, or sorry, conducive to doing so. I want to provide my students the optimal educational experience, all despite the risks. Am I conflicted? Certainly. Apprehensive? Absolutely. But I feel, rightly or wrongly, the personal risk to my sons and myself can be managed. And that is the same decision the NFL has made for its players and staff. As with all things, we will see. And that is the end of our article and the end of section 5. So, let us look at what form of persuasion, meaning ethos, pathos, or logos, is being used in the bracketed section with the at symbol in section 5. It goes, I get it. I am not consistent here, expressing caution for athletes to which I have no personal or professional attachment, yet letting my sons, the most important people in my world, head out into an uncertain world where the virus has recently surged. My older son just moved to L.A., while I opt for in-person teaching to boot. So I'd like you to tell me what form of ethos, pathos, or logos you believe is being used here. Next, we are looking at this other section in section five within the brackets with the stars. I would like you to tell me whether it is ethos, pathos, or logos. On the professional side, my primary point has been that we need to be honest that health and safety is not the top priority many claim it to be. If it were, we would not have non-bubbled contact sports in 2020. I would then like you to tell me, do you feel the author's choice to allow his sons to venture into the world and go back to work are solely up to him alone or him and his family to make? Is it reasonable for them to make the choice to venture out into a world where COVID-19 exists? Lastly, do you agree with the author's statement that health and safety are paramount, but there are other concerns? Please explain your reasoning for your answer in the Ed Puzzle. Alrighty, guys. That is the end of our article. Thank you for listening, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.